Interesting. Very interesting. Alright, guys. What's up, guys? This is Mike Lurus. Going to bring you the semi-final match we have on the Radiant, the Power of Friendship, who apparently forgot to set their team name, but that's fine. On the Dire, we have Hot Hands Hand Warmers, so just Hot Hands, going to be good enough. Had a little bit of a long break, and it's actually starting to get pretty late, so I'm starting to get pretty tired. So hopefully, this game is not going to be one of those, you know, hour and a half slug fests because that might actually just put me to sleep. Also, um, yes, this is from SECS, Semi Pro Dota 2. So go to semiprodota.com if you want any more details about this. It's being streamed on three Twitch channels because apparently we're, we don't want to co cast together, but that's fine because redundancy is sometimes just a lot of fun. It stopped raining, so I don't think I'll have to worry about my power going out anymore. Please don't go out as soon as I say that. Okay, we're still good. But, yeah, this is going to be the semi-final match to see who goes up into the finals to go up against uh, to go up against the team that we've already seen a couple times, URT, uh, who've been just steamrolling past everyone. So, they would draft at hand. It is going to be Doombringer first pick. Instantly responded to by Tidehunter as well as a Disruptor. Two heroes that are very, very vulnerable to Doom, but then again, what hero isn't? See a little bit more of regular bans now. Uh, the Faceless Void getting hit in the first round of bans is a hero that's been first picked in the past couple of games, actually. Very highly prioritized hero just because of how much of an instant win factor that Chronosphere is. Uh, I mean, it's hard to miss a Chronosphere. It's not. It's a little bit harder to miss a Ravage or a Static Storm, stuff like that. Regardless, Tidehunter and Disruptor is going to give the Hot Hand side a lot of team fight potential just right off the bat. Not only that, but Disruptor, solid lane support hero that uh, Tidehunter is going to. I mean, Tidehunter probably going to be playing in his own lane. But if it is a Tidehunter versus Doom lane, then Hot Hands are going to be very okay with that. Nature's Prophet is going to be the pick from the Power of Friendship. Here, that's kind of vulnerable to Disruptor, again, in the sense that if you teleport in, he's just going to send you right back. So, Disruptor is pretty useful as far as that is concerned. But both teams have a pretty good base of which to work off of. The fr Power of Friendship side having a little bit more of a skirmish-oriented team. Uh, you know, get the pickoffs, get out kind of deal. A little bit of Rat Dota, that kind of thing. Whereas the Hot Hand side is more about that you know, one blast of team fight, demolish the enemy team, then take the objective. So we'll see if the uh, little bit more elusive, little bit more hit and run style of the power of friendship will be able to overpower the team fight. Really, it's the uh, it's on the burden of the team without the team fight to stop the team with the team fight from actually putting everything together. Uh, whether it's by pickoffs or split pushing or anything that you have at your disposal. Uh, if you let the team fight come together, you're probably going to get messed up. Now, they do have Doom, the spell, so they will be able to really hit heavily cripple the team fight. And they are using their two bands, actually, you know, even one of their first bands, the Brewmaster, to cripple it even further. So, Brewmaster, Invoker, and Enigma all currently being banned out, whereas Hot Hands going to target first the Rubik, don't want to have Static Storm stolen, that is a recipe for disaster. Uh, Ravage is also really bad, but it's a little bit harder to steal, so, yeah, you know, take that for what it's worth. But, yeah, big ultimates that could be stolen on the side of Hot Hands, now they're going to get rid of a Tinker. They don't want to have any sort of delay. I kind of expect to see a Shadow Shaman pick up from them, uh, just getting a little bit more aggression, a lot more disables would certainly help. I would actually give them a way to force fights just by pushing slap down the serpent wards. When that happens, you ha invite the enemy into your team where you have Static Storm waiting, where you have Ravage waiting, and then it just gets a lot better from there. But really, any support hero will do at the moment. I mean, they are also missing a mid lane hero and everything else, so. As of right now, it's going to be a Sand King, it looks like. Even more big team fight ultimate. Sand King Disruptor is not the best combination as far as catching people out and killing them. It could get a couple picks here and there, but Sand King usually does need someone with a little bit more play stunning than Disruptor. I mean, Glimpse is okay if you could set that up properly, but it is a little bit difficult to do. So Sand King Disruptor tied under. That's a lot of wombo combo goodness. Nature's Prophet Doom, pretty vulnerable to that stuff. I mean, Doom will have a hard time picking out which target he actually does want to hit with that ultimate. I think for the most part it's going to be on the Tidehunter, but uh, I don't know. If Sand King gets a quick Blink Dagger, 
by you know sandstorm from level three jungling and things get really dangerous for the power of friendship really really quickly but to be fair they themselves have yet to pick up any of their support heroes let's see what support heroes they're going to want to go for I think it's better if they just avoid the team fight altogether and just try to take them one at a time you know be as aggressive as possible and just try to shut down any progress towards blink daggers towards big items or even towards levels if they just lock down the lanes really hard the power of friendship then they'll just delay the team fight of hot hands and if you delay it even just by a minute that minute could you know snowball into more and more minutes down the line the doom nature's prophet and what is going to be for their support okay marana well, Marana Bane, it's a great way to lock down combinations, and I don't see Hot Hands picking up a Bane unless they want to lane it in the mid lane, but that sacrifices a little bit too much of their late game, so I don't think that's really going to be what they're interested in in this particular game. So, Marana is going to be the pickup, and she will most certainly have someone to set up for that uh, arrow in the laning stage, whether it's Bane, whether it's Shadow Demon. I mean, Hot Hands, they're fairly prepared for it because they do have a Disruptor, great way of warding away the enemies if they do in fact start with the nightmare combination but hot hands still need their core hero still need a mid lane hero as well it's tough to pick those because you don't really know the matchups there's no good uh, I mean any uh, ro one role hero they pick up doesn't really matter who it's gonna be fairly vulnerable to doom but I guess if you just pick up more and more high priorities then doom's gonna be forced to use his ultimate on only one hero and it looks like it's gonna be weaver another hero that Doom would love to slap that ultimate on. But then if he does that, you know, Sand King, Disruptor, Tide Hunter, you have so many good targets, so many important targets to Doom. And as it stands right now, the Power of Friendship, they are currently pretty CC light. They have an arrow, and that's it. I mean, I guess you could say Disruption is kind of crowd control, but as far as being able to lock down someone and kill them, the arrow is gonna be it. So, the mid lane for the, uh, the Power of Friendship, I think there will be pretty good with picking up a doom no, not a doom, a, they already have a doom, a storm I, they're going to be good with picking up a storm uh, it'll be a little bit crowded in the lanes perhaps Marana Shadow Demon roaming but you know storm mid, nature's profit, doom, solo lanes they just need someone who could offer some semblance of disables when you're dealing with the weaver, when you're dealing with the sand king you really need to just be able to lock them down and as of right now the power of friendship have no ways of doing that so yeah, they need a mid lane hero who could get some early disables and well I think Storm with his mobility it's the odds of you catching Weaver with Storm is significantly higher than many other heroes for now they're going to ban the Ember I mean both teams do need to pick themselves up a mid lane hero so Hot Hands you know they have the first pick but of course that means the Power of Friendship will be able to counter pick that for you know, however much that's worth Something with Disable, a Dragon Knight, wouldn't be too terrible on either side, really. Get a little bit more pushing. Again, it'll allow Hot Hands a way of forcing the fights. I wouldn't mind seeing a Dragon Knight there. It'll be a pretty good setup for the Sand King Disruptor. Of course, picking up a Dragon Knight does open the door for very unfavorable ma unfavorable matchups. Though they've already eliminated the really bad one, the Viper. Tinker's off the table as well, Ember Spirit's off, and Invoker. So really, the pick up a Dragonite is fairly safe. I mean, they, the Power of Friendship could go for something like a Puck, could go for something, well, Templar Assassin. So now they have all the time in the world to think of a good counter. Pudge? Pudge one time? Pudge one time. Please, Pudge one time. Well, Templar Assassin is going to be the pick up. A hero that is easily countered. Though it is, again, another hero that does excel when there's very, very light amounts of CC and OD is going to be the pickup. Another way of knocking out heroes, just putting them in a bubble, so they have two ways, the disruption as well as that in prison. No D is a decent matchup versus TA. I mean TA with no refraction, usually you say, oh, counter TA, you burn through a refraction. Well if you don't have any man on TA you can't refract. So there you go. There's your counter right there. So OD is going to be the pickup, but still the Radiant team, a little bit light on disables. They'll have to deal with a lot of AoE and OD, if he doesn't have a BKB, he could just be caught in the crossfire and be dropped really quickly, especially if he gets silenced. 
You just ravage and right. epicenter. That's yeah. gonna be pretty deadly. But anyway, we got ourselves a real match. SECS semifinals, guys. Black and yellow is going to be blue and playing the Shadow Demon. He's gonna be supporting. Marana probably going to be supporting as well. Going to be played by KGB. Taku is going to be jungling as Nature Prophet. We'll head towards the top lane. You know what it is, so we have you know what it is and black and yellow on the same team, but you know what it is is yellow, so pff, I don't know. He's going to be handling the mid lane as OD versus the TA. Should be an easy lane. And Huga is going to be farming as the Doom. On the other side of the river, on Hot Hands, we have Drop playing the Tide Hunter. So Tide versus Doom is, you know, a pretty good matchup. And Shadow Demon Marana, though the stun combination is pretty good, the damage that comes after is not too intense. So Drop should be having a relatively decent time on that bottom lane. Same cannot be said for Monib, who's going to be playing the mid, mid lane Templar Assassin. The refraction early on is going to give her a couple CS. She get a bottle and whatnot if she does want to go for that. But she's not going to have much mana because Templar Assassin's in growth. It's two. It's not. T it's not terrible. She's not totally reliant on mana, but still, it's an OD, and any hero is really hard pressed to deal with an OD in an efficient way. Melsum's going to be supporting as Sanking up on top lane. He's going to be supporting Cheech's Weaver. And also the support hero is going to be the Chonginator on the Disruptor with a pretty kick-ass helmet. Mythical NS. And it counts heroes glimpsed. I don't know why that's zero because I've seen him cast glimpses in the last game. Here we go. You know what it is? Might actually be in a little bit of trouble from the get-go. Melsum, though, yeah, the weakness of Disruptor and Sanking as roamers, as gankers, as really heroes that do anything outside of, you know, just sitting back and doing pulls, is that they have to get, they don't do that much damage, and the stuns that they do have are a little bit difficult to land. I mean, Kinetic Field, not exactly the most reliable, and the level 1 uh, Burrow Strike is pretty shit as well. Titan is going to take an arrow on the top side, does have a point in Kraken Shell, but it's not going to help him. KGB draws the first blood by killing off drop, the only level 1 Tide Hunter. Gets caught out, and they said the stun duration wasn't the best. The uh, stun, the damage wasn't the best. But hey, if it's a level one tie hunter versus three heroes, you're still going to have a little bit of a tough time. And getting caught out pretty far away from any semblance of safety is really going to cost them. The same thing uh, is not happening on the other end. Nature Prophet not being pressured at all. Really, Disruptor and Sand King. The pressure that they could put on this Nature Prophet just through the heroes alone is very, very limited. Disruptor, you know, he has some ranged attacks and stuff like that, which is okay and everything, but it's not exactly enough if you're really going to want to put the heat on this Nature Prophet, who's now pressuring Cheech back really, really well, just with two ints plus the right clicks. Cheech is going to get dropped pretty low, however, he's tangoing up. Now Taku's in a little bit of trouble, though he will just regenerate and be just fine. No glimpse from the Disruptor to cancel that. The Nature Prophet will be forced to bail, will go all the way back to the fountain, but put a lot of hurt onto that Weaver, forcing out many tangos to be consumed very, very early on. We are taking a look at him in the back of the mid bottom lane. 8 for O versus the 3 0 for Tidehunter. Once the Tidehunter gets to level 3, level 4, this lane's going to get a lot harder for the Doombringer, but Monib's going to be the one who's really in trouble because Black and Yellow, as well as KGB, are circling around. The disruption is there. Arrow's going to be thrown kind of freehanded. You can't really expect to land an arrow off of a uh, low level in prison, or, you know, not a max level in prison from that far range. So, a little bit ambitious, the rotation from Blue as well as Teal not working out just yet, but 10 9 versus the 5 for 2 Templar Assassin really hurting for that, that CS. And, well, she's getting a couple here and there, but as long as Blue and Teal stick around, this Templar Assassin is going to be in for you know, not the best of times. However, the longer that the Priestess as well as Shadow Demon stick around in that lane, the more time, the more space the Tide Hunter gets to just do his thing. He's going to start stacking up some Ancients so we can Anchor Smash them later. He might not get this one. No, he's going to get this one. Unless they just block each other, he's not going to get it. It's close. This box is actually more like this than this. So he didn't get that one, unfortunately, for drop. But regardless, level 2 Anchor Smash, level 1 Kraken Shell. He's going to keep himself relatively safe, at least from this Doombringer, until the Marana and Shadow Demon make their eventual rotation back to this top lane. Because minus 42 is pretty intense. I mean, dealing 20 damage a pop is not exactly what you want to be doing as a Doombringer since right clicks are really all you have. And now you know what it is. Might be a little trouble. Glimpse back. Very short range. But he gets self disruption. And now the Burrow Strike will miss. And teleportation coming in from the Nature Prophet just to scare away the rest of the dire heroes. Courier will be spotted out. Instantly will go flying, though. So Nature Prophet can't kill that one. But OD with a timely self astral 
He's going to keep himself safe from, again, a level 1 Sand King. Level 1 Burrow Strike is pretty crappy, guys. It's pretty terrible. So, you know, whenever you try to make something happen with that skill, you have to be... You ha either have a good amount of setup or just be very lucky and hope that it works. In that situation, there was no setup and there was no luck. So Sand King is going to walk away from that one empty-handed. Which is kind of unfortunate, but that's the price you pay with picking up a Sand King Disruptor combo. You're inherently going to have a little bit of a weaker roam game. Tidehunter, level 2 Kraken Shell, level 2 Anchor Smash. Has some pretty huge damage reduction, and, well, he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them. Doombringer, hitting pretty hard, but once anyone gets, with hit, gets hit with an Anchor Smash, damage drops down to almost negligible amounts. It is pretty much negligible when you have, you know, 20 damage reduction. This Tidehunter is going to survive pretty easily on this bottom lane unless he gets caught out with the full combo without getting an Anchor Smash off, and that's very unlikely, I would say. He could get Arrow. The Arrow has to be for a very long duration if he is actually going to make anything happen. You know, otherwise, he'll get the Anchor Smash off and be relatively fine. So Tidehunter getting his levels, level 4 on him versus level 5 from Ninja's Prophet, both off lanes. Having a relatively easy time as far as off lanes can be. 20 to 14 OD maintaining pretty good control over this Templar Assassin. Though Templar Assassin's still getting enough farm, I would say, to make her her laning phase, you know, manageable. It's good enough. Now saw him final level 2. If he kills these treants, he won't breach level 3, I don't think. He might. He will. Thought with two heroes there, it wouldn't. But now that'll give him a second point in Sandstorm. Now Sand King is going to say, peace, I'm out of here. I'm going to jungle for the next 5-10 minutes. You guys are on your own. Level 3 Sandstorm is really easy, but they're instead going to smoke still with the level 1 Burrow Strike. Like, this is how depressing level 1 Burrow Strike is. This circle is the circle of depression. With him and Disruptor going to look to go once again for the OD, who now does have the Sandy's Eclipse. Monob's very low on intelligence, so this TA can't really contribute that much, especially when the OD is so far to the southeast. So you know what it is. Playing pretty safe. There's no reason to go super aggressive versus the TA when TA is not really getting that much, and yeah, he's going to make a beeline for this haste rune. And this roam, so far, not yielding anything, but going for the Nature's Prophet, a little bit of an easier target, actually. Cheech is not too healthy, however. Going to get in there with the Shikuchi, and the Lightning Strike damage, that just might be enough. I mean, they actually just didn't need anyone else. Like, Cheech probably could have handled that by himself. He has a time lapse now. So Disruptor is going to find the kill on the Nature's Prophet. Easy kill for the Hot Hand side. Sand King wasn't even a part of that, but that doesn't even matter. He was there to get a little bit of gold to get the experience. Level 2 Sandstorm means that he could jungle up with the best of them. It's a very safe jungle as long as there's no rotation out from the Mirana as well as Shadow Demon. And it looks like they're just content to sit on this bot lane, Radiant mess with the drop as much as they can. The drop has itself a pretty good Ancient stack going. That's 1, 2, 3 stacks of Ancients. Anchor Smash is going to make short work of that later on. Hell, even Monob could move over there and try to get some side blade goodness but Mana might be in a little bit of trouble you know what it is if he gets to in prison there it is and disruption second bubble and arrow arrow is on the mark and Mana does not have any refraction he's gonna melt like butter Sandy's Eclipse take that one really easily now drop can try to go toe to toe with Huga taking a lot of damage gonna be forced to pop off that scorched earth Drop well on his way to his level 6. Almost does have that mark. He'll hit it about the same time as Nature's Prophet, in fact. Having that Templar Assassin being locked down this hard by OD, making things really difficult for the Dire side to get anything going. Hot Hands. Without a Templar Assassin snowballing, I mean, she can hard carry okay, especially when she has a Weaver kind of share the hard carry load. But really, you would rather have your Templar Assassin be a little bit active early on. Level 4 Refraction is legit. But not when OD, when they have like enough imprisons just to lock you away for that enti the entirety of that duration. Now regen rune stolen, they're going to catch Sand King. Arrow will be dodge Melisom. He's going to sit in the sandstorm, will get cursed up. Here comes Monib, and try to go for you know what it is, but you know, haste rune. It's hard to actually lock down this OD. But now bubble onto the TA. There is a star storm, level 2, will do some pretty good damage versus Monib. Here comes the Chonginator, will valiantly take the arrow for his buddies. Now the trap's going to go out. Here comes Cheech. Black and Yellow is going to try to book it out of there. Will not happen. The TP will get cancelled by that Burrow Strike. And now Taku going to jump right into a kinetic field. Is there any Sack Storm? Not just yet. Level 4 only. Someone gets put into a disruption. It is going to be a Templar Assassin. will pop out and will take a lot of damage, though. Will be all blocked for now. Cheech on the high ground. It's going to get helped with by the 
Oh, Taku needs some phase. No. What? Oh, they dropped a ward. Okay. Gonna sprout himself and almost get out, but a timely ward from the disruptor. And now you know what it is. Might be in a little trouble as well. We'll get the we'll get the bubble out, and there's the ravage. No more ways to save himself. He's gonna get beaten down by the tide. KGB even getting clipped by that as well. Mondo gonna dive deep. KGB eating his way all the way through the trees, over the river, and through the woods. He's gonna take get hit pretty hard. Mondo actually wants to chase this one down. There's gonna another leap up for Mirana and another disruption onto Mondo. Cheech is here as well. Gonna try to poke at Taku just a little bit. Does he have a time lapse? He does, but he's out of mana. So I guess he doesn't. Gonna Shikuchi and then try to make a break for it. And that's not gonna happen. Chichi's gonna drop. No disables needed, really, when you get hit with an arrow out of the blue. Or no, follow-up disables, rather. All the while, keep in mind, Hugo was on the bottom lane. Just happily farming as Doom. Head of Midas, level 4. This dude is going to be rolling in the dough soon enough. And whoever comes down to his lane is going to be worried about the Scorched Earth, Doom into Shockwave and Bum Rush. It's a scary thing going up against this Doom solo. I mean, Tidehunter could do it, but I think Tidehunter would rather be in the mid lane doing stuff like what he just did. So 3-5 to five as we breach the 10 minute mark. Sand King has hit the level 5 mark. He's going to get some pretty good Sandstorm jungling, as we see he is doing right now. Try to get his Blink Dagger up as soon as possible. He's 800 gold, which at this stage, 10 minutes in, is not too terrible for the Sand King. He's going to be making a straight beeline for that item. Really, there's no one who's going to go into the enemy jungle and kind of stop him. There is, There are observe wards placed so they could see if he does try to go for this medium camp or no, the easy camp's a little bit out of sight. But really, the hard camp is where the money is. The hard camp is where the experience is. So if they're not shutting down the Sand King actively in this area, well, then Sand King is just going to have all the free space in the world. Speaking of free space in the world, drop as well as the Chongonator are going to cash in on a huge ancient stack. That is four ancient stacks at least so that's pretty good I mean drop is gonna be rolling in the dough after that that's gonna give him his blink dagger so blink dagger number one gonna come up very shortly for the hot hand side whereas there's uh, no real huge items in response as it stands right now the power of friendship they're just farming up for the later game they're gonna be caught unaware by this blink dagger that now the tide hunter will pick up there you go Blink Dagger money is available. Cheech farming happily for his Lincoln Sphere, it looks like. Gonna protect himself from any disruptions, from any stray arrows that are gonna come through and hit him wildly. Because that is actually possible, as we have seen. And Sand King. Still farming for his Blink Dagger as he cracks the level 6 mark. He is gonna go for that point in epicenter, not going to go with 3 points in Sandstorm. Level 3 Burrow Strike, 2 Sandstorm is really all you need to jungle. So he's not gonna be super greedy about it. But he's well on his way to his Blink Dagger. Some big items are coming up, whereas Huga, he has Phase Boots, he has Drums probably coming out to him. Yes, Drums. And that's it. This Doombringer is going to be really fast, but if he gets locked down in a, in a giant AoE combo, which the Chonginator has hit his level 7 mark, so maxed out in the Glimpse, has a Static Storm on top of that. He's going to be able to control the fights really well and you know put people into Sand King range, put people into Tidehunter range. And really, Tidehunter doesn't really have to worry about that too much since he's a Blink Dagger. Everyone's in Tidehunter range. Hot Hands have a pretty good timing opportunity right now where their heroes are simply stronger at this stage. Marana Shadow Demon, their roam, hasn't gotten that much accomplished. So that means that Hot Hands are going to seize this opportunity. Just go for a straight push on the top lane. They have all five heroes up here. And if anyone does want to defend, well, good luck to you. It's not going to go very well. Monib gets clipped with an arrow. However, the refraction defensive charges will protect him from the tower for the most part. Fortification will slow it down, and it looks like there might possibly be a trade. Mid lane, pretty healthy. Bottom lane, not as so. But this tower, at the very least, is going to go down. And Tide is now in the mid lane. Has a Blink Ravage. There it is. Blink out to Ravage in two. Cheech is here as well. Gives some pretty heavy damage. Going to instantly go for Taku. This time, he will not get out. I don't know how they saw him. But it doesn't matter because they got him nonetheless, and now you know what it is. Might be in a little trouble. There's no gust just yet on Tidehunter, but he's going to blink forward for an Anchor Smash, and Malsom is going to get the Burst Strike on top of that. Huga's going to jump right in for the Doom onto Drop, but Drop has already used pretty much everything that he wanted to use. Malsom going to channel the Epicenter, not do too much damage onto not <laughs> damage onto anyone. Black Nail going to take one pulse, but that's not too much. Now KGB might be in a little trouble. Cheech is still hot on his trail, does have seven Majesty Charges, so he'll be able to refill his mana pool almost completely. And Huga still in the area, he's going to get hit with Static storm but the damage from doom is simply too much now cheats he's gonna learn that very quickly does he have enough mana for a time uh, time lapse he will back it out and it looks like he will book it to safety hot hands they lose three in the end but they get themselves quite a few kills and unfortunately
Unfortunately for the power of friendship, they're unable to catch up to this weaver who could just Shikuchi away, yeah. Not really sure why Taku is bothering to chase down a weaver. That's not going to happen. That fight will give the Sand King a blink dagger who did manage to slip away in the midst of all that chaos. Keep in mind that that fight, Ravage, was not used. It was used, you know, much earlier. So Hot Hands taking a kind of running gun team fight. It's not exactly their forte at the moment. But hey, they're powerful enough, I think. They should have an experience advantage. Only 500, however. But really, the gold advantage that the Radiant have aren't really translating into big items. Like, Power Treads is okay. Plate Mail is pretty good, but uh, when you could essentially ignore the Doombringer and just kill the rest of his teammates going pretty well for hot hands all things considered despite that gold disadvantage now they have to actually translate that into towers if they don't then doombringer is going to get a little bit too big kgb can jump forward for a sentry ward cheech will be fine looks like pings are happening for defense of the mid lane tower and nothing's really going to happen until hot hands get all their big team fight ultimates up that's going to be 35 seconds at the very least when that happens, they could go for a straight push into this tier tier one mid tower. They're definitely powerful enough in the team fight, and when you're grouped up as five and you're forcing team fights like that, that's when the comp of hot hands is actually the strongest. You can still tell, like between Taku split pushing, black and yellow roaming around a little bit. The Radiant side want to avoid these team fights pretty much at all costs. But if they get into a situation where the fight is unavoidable, I mean, they either take the fight and do really poorly. Or, you know, try to take, get a pick off and delay the inevitable. Cheech will get double dusted. He has a time lapse, though, so there goes all of the dust. He's cursed up, though, so he's taking a little bit a little more damage than he would really like. Drop's going to jump forward, looking for a gush on the black and yellow. Black and yellow doesn't have a TP. He's going to get bailed out by Marana. But Burrow Strike? They know he's around. They don't have any sentries, though. So black and yellow is going to hide. <laughs> Just hide. Yeah, that's the only way to get out of there. Fortunately for Hot Hands, no big ultimates were used in that engagement, so they're still good to go. And black and yellow still looking for an opportunity to leave. Has an Observer Ward, so he knows exactly when the creeps are going to pass through. But Huga now packing a double damage rune. And illusions? No. OD on the bottom lane has illusions. So, Hot Hands are kind of gearing up. Black and yellow sees all of them. He has 1,700 gold, so he's pretty rich, but he's stuck here, so that's not going to be a big factor. KGB getting a caught glimpse. No glimpse? Glimpse was used? I don't know. Marana dying one way or another. Split push from, you know what it is, and Taku. Going to look to force this massive team fight back. Cheech is going to teleport in. Does he actually want to go in on this? I don't know if I would do that. He does have a Lincoln Sphere. But Taku could just pop that off with a Sprout. Cheech is going to block the imprisoned world of Hurt. He's definitely going to go down here. Big damage coming out from this Weaver. However, the Doombringer, here he comes as well. Not going to be able to land that Doom on the Weaver. Just like that, the split push is going to go the other way. And they could probably force this tower, Hot Hands. Blue has finally gotten himself out of that pickle that he was in. Going to hopefully get back to the safety of his tower. Yeah, they see him. They knew the Shadow Demon was around there somewhere. They just didn't know where. You don't really want to be looking around in this area. It's kind of a waste of time. But if he's not there, then you just look stupid. The bottom lane, the fight is going to be forced. Monob's got to make sure to not get caught off with a straight disruption or an arrow or anything. The Sand King has his Blink Dagger Epicenter, and do the Power of Friendship know about it? Nelisom, oh, he is perfectly set up for an Epicenter. Here it goes, Epicenter, Blink! Where's the blink? There it is. Unto Burr Strike on Black and Yellow. You know what is dropping very low, very quickly, but that's about it. Melisom is in sentry range. He's going to get popped by the ultimate. Templar Assassin slipping away. Here comes Cheech. Going to try to toe-to-toe -to -toe it with Huga. That's not a good idea. He forces out the Doom, and that is not a lethal Doom. Blink forward from the Tide Hunter. Going to get a gush onto that Doom, but he's regenerating so damn quickly. You cannot kill this guy in a running gun fight like that. You need to burst him down in a team fight. Monop going to get clipped with an arrow. No follow-up, though. Nice. Cheech. Does have a time lapse available to him, though he's not very healthy. Instantly, the, the Nature Prophet, right back up to the top lane, will go straight for a Maelstrom. Wants to be as ratty as possible. And, you know, as much as I hate Rat Dota, if you're going to be playing like this, this if you're going to be playing a Rat Dota game, this is the one to do it. The one where you absolutely cannot get caught in a team fight. Where you need to be split pushing as much as possible. Now, Cheech is actually going to go searching for Taku. The swarm is going to fly. The swarm misses. 
That means Sheej cannot get this kill. Well, even if it hit, I don't think he would have had enough damage to kill him off. So, either way, Nature Prophet gets out of there alive. But 7 to 11, Monib finding a double stack in the enemy jungle. We'll clear that one out. He's gone for the hand of Midas. So he knows that, based off of his early game, there's really not much of a possibility of him snowballing and you know really being super effective in this game as far as that is concerned. So he's going to go for the race car build, make sure he has the mobility, and he's going to depend on the refraction on the meld in order to keep himself relevant come late game. And it's a good way. It's a good look for a Templar Assassin. Like we've seen that. Uh, I think Arteezy did it in uh, ESL one. Same exact thing. Just hard carry Templar Assassin. It's a little bit underrated, but hey, he has side blades. He has a lot more damage potential to go. If he could line him up, then he's going to get incredible value moving forward. High Hunter on his way to his mech. Blink daggers, blink daggers everywhere. That glimpse was unimpressive. And now Chonginator can he eclipse with an arrow. Star Storm is there. The secondary storm will also land, but the burst strike, uh, not enough. Nature Prophet Ultimate coming through, killing off the disruptor. Those are the kind of picks that the Radiant side need. They need to be able to pick off heroes, deny the giant team fight from hot hands. And then take an objective. Taku is already on that take the take an objective part. He has his Maelstrom. Is he going to go blink and just go full Bulldog? I hope not, because that's, that's frustrating to watch. It's like probably not as frustrating to watch as it is to play against, but still. Cheech is going to find Taku. The Shikuchi is there. He's going to find himself 1v1 in, in the arena of death. The Shikuchi will kill him off. Two men enter. One man leave. Two men enter. One man leave. Cheech has enough damage to solo kill Nature Prophet before he can teleport away. Now that he knows that, he's going to be acting that much more fearless in every subsequent fight. He does have himself a Mythal Hammer. I want to say that's a Desolator because really there's no not much crowd control that would make uh, Black King Bar the preferable option. Even, even if you do have BKB up, even if it's like active, you're still going to be, oh, jump forward from Zan King. He's going to get a two-man Ravage set up for drop and the Static Storm. KGB and Black and Yellow. Well, at least KGB is going to go down really quickly. Huga does have the ultimate available. Already everyone's starting to back off. Modem not doing too much damage versus Huga. That Shiva's Guard making things very difficult for him. Still trying to fight it out. Here comes Cheech. Going to try to hunt down that uh, Shadow Demon. Not going to happen, though. Going to throw out the Swarm. Going to try to go for you know what it is. Oh, no, he's trying to go for Huga. You cannot kill this Doom. That's just not going to happen. Chungnator going to get clipped with that Shiva's. You know what it is. Put himself in a bubble, but Cheech is right on top with Shikuchi. And one right click. There it is. Cheech is unstoppable. Now Monib's going to try to run away from Taku in the meantime. Cheech can chase down Black and Yellow, who actually was rejoined this fight. Probably not the best idea. He's going to go down and give up a double kill to Cheech. That's a lot of gold that he just got from this fight, and it will, in fact, be a Desolator. Monib gets to survive. They lose the tide. They burn all their teamfight ultimates, with the exception of actually the Epicenter. Melsum went in first, so he got the brunt of it. Hey, what are you going to do, right? Roshan will get worked down. With the drop, tanking it up. The meld minus armor, making things a little bit easier for the hot hand squad. And well, here comes Huga, actually. He's going to pop the Shiva's guard first and foremost. Drop that dropping really, really low. Epicenter being charged, though, by Anil. So I'm going to unload all of it onto Taku and now onto KGB. But it's too late because already Templar Assassin has gone down. Melisom sitting there with a Sandstorm. Can't really do too much. Cheech, though, still going to go to town on these supports. Black and yellow will get dropped. And it's triple kill for Huga in the meantime. He's very tanky. Bring down this this Doom is a very, very hard task. Cheech on his way out. He needs a time lapse. Uh, no, he's going to stick around. There's the time lapse. He's going to try to go for Huga once again. Monum's going to toe to toe him. The Imprisoned going to buy the Doom a little bit more time, but you know what? Is taking a pretty big hit after that fact. Now Huga trapped. He's going to drop the Doom in desperation, but he knows that he's going to go down. That might have bought Templar Assassin into lethal range, but if it is, then they'll just deny him. And it is lethal, so they will, well, earn charge. Deny. There you go. Desolator. I don't know if it applies minus armor to allies. Honestly, I have no idea. But the plus 60 damage is certainly going to make it a lot easier to last hit your ally. And now Cheech has enough damage to realistically, uh, at least he has a hope of killing off the Doombringer. Starstorm going to find its mark. And Cheech now, well, he's stuck in the sprout, will time lapse all of that damage back. And he's going to make a break for it. He will make it out just fine. Drop is here with a Ravage. Melsum is here with a Burrow Strike. It looks like that fight will not continue. They don't get the tower. It's actually at one hit range. So Cheech could just walk in and secure that one if he wants to. 
But instead, he's going to hunt for bigger game. Gonna snag the Invis rune. Yes, and then do a lot of damage. You know what it is? The damage is enough. The, sh the German attack from the low ground is going to kill him off. Now black and yellow, he's going to get trapped with a Burrow Strike. He's going to go down. Cheech is beyond godlike. This Weaver, can anyone stop him? The lack of stuns from the Radiant side really, really crippling them at this point in time. I mean, Doobring has picked up a BKB, so he's going to be immune to the entirety of the fight, but the rest of his team, not so lucky. It's basically the Doombringer trying to make stuff happen while the rest of his team flees from Cheech. And Cheech gets... You know, a bi another big damage at him. Gets an MKB, gets a Daedalus or something like that. And he's going to be able to cut through all the supports and then go for the Doombringer. Because Doombringer toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Weaver at this stage is starting to look less and less likely. Because the Weaver is level 18, Doombringer is level 17, so he's doing pretty well for himself. Let's see how much damage the Cheech could do with the double damage rune. Holy damage, Batman. Huga is dropping like a rock. He's going to get a kill onto Melisom at the very least, but he's taking a lot of damage in return. Cheech is going to continue the chase for this Doom. Is there any true sight? Does it matter? Huga will survive because of that ultimate, and now he's going to, well, force the time lapse out of the Weaver. KGB, though, will get 100 to 0 almost instantly. The age is still up onto Cheech, and he's looking for more potentially wants to use that Aegis, so he's going to go ham as much as he possibly can. Going to find, you know what it is, we'll get put into a bubble. Is there any follow-up? Of course not, because there's no s disables. OD is going to go for a BKB. It's an item that he really needs, but <laughs> at this point, you need something to lock down this Weaver. Doom has got to be the only option, but blinking in for a level death into a Doom means that Cheech is already going to have enough time to, you know, Shikuchi and walk away, so you might hit him with the Doom eventually, but he's already out of reach, so there's really no point in that. H Prophet looks like he's going to go for an Orchid, which is a pretty good item, I think, uh, at least for dealing with his Weaver. I'd rather be seeing a Sheepstick, but, you know, he's 1, 7, and 4. He's not having a great time. So Orchid is, I guess, what you have to go for, but, you know, Orchid is not going to help him when Cheech is on the aggressive, because, you know, Nature's Prophet can't exactly Orchid and then teleport away. Weaver is clearly showing that he has more than enough damage to take out that Nature's Prophet. That was even pre-Desolator, and now Weaver's sitting at another 3,200 gold. Gotta keep our eyes on Cheech, because he's looking to make things happen all by himself, and really, there's nothing that the Radiant team could do about that, except for put people into imprisons, disrupt them, just try to waste the Weaver's time by splitting his focus every which way. It's not really a great counter, though, so I don't know what's going to happen in the long run. Drop. Going to just, you know, kill five stacks of Ancients, or one, two, three, four stacks of Ancients, Without taking any damage, literally no damage between Crack and Chill and Anchor Smash. Because this is balanced. This is real balanced right here. Ancients, eat your heart out. I mean, life steal with Luna and Gyrocopter, you don't even get it that good. But Cheech, I think going for a butterfly might be it. What is he going to do? Ship his magic wand? It is going to be a butterfly. Yeah. There's no disables you have to worry about. You don't need a BKB. And now Huga going to get hit with a Burrow Strike. And Monob going to set up for that minus armor. Dirt Drop is going to come through as well. Instantly forcing out the BKB TP and the Murana ultimate. That's a really big win for the hot hand side. They're going to make a straight push for this bottom lane. Though Taku on the top lane making things a little bit difficult as far as decision making. Who do they send back? Do they send anyone back? Do they just YOLO push? They have a devastating team fight that they can force. And no one has travels or anything like that, so looks like it's only going to be the Templar Assassin. I think that's the correct decision. You could fight perfectly well without the Templar Assassin. She doesn't have that huge team fight presence. It's just a little bit extra damage. And when you have a Weaver, I don't really know if you need a little bit of extra damage. Because he's all the damage that they need. Cheat, you're all the damage that this team will need. Tidehunter taking literally no damage from this tower, and this tower will get brought down. Desolator plus Eagle Song doing work. So much plus damage. They're going to clump up in D Ward. KGB in black and yellow off to the sides. Can't really do anything but sit and watch. Really, this roaming combination hasn't done enough. I mean, they've gotten a couple of kills since the early stage of the game. But they need to really use those few disables that they have if they actually want to make, uh, make the game viable. If they want to make the game viable for the friendship team, power of friendship, from the get-go. Now they just have no tools with dealing with this Weaver. No tools whatsoever. He has his butterfly up and, you know, killing this and then like three more CS. 18, 5, yeah, 400 gold, 300 gold. That'll give him his butterfly. And then, <laughs> like, even if they lock him down with an arrow, which is very unlikely, first of all, you can't kill him. First of all, he still has the Aegis. It'll be reclaimed shortly enough. But evasion just means that, I mean, Doombringer is going to really struggle against that. 
It will get turned off during Doom, however. So there is that to consider. May or may not be relevant moving forward, but hell, even if he's if the Weaver doesn't need that uh, evasion, just 60 damage is not too terrible. I mean, that's Desolator 60 damage with 7 minus armor, lots of attack speed. We were just gonna go to town on everybody. Not to mention the fact that he's also backed up with, you know, Epicenter level two, Ravage level two, and level two static storm. That also helps. That also helps. So it's just gonna be a mid straight push. The rats from the bottom lane looking to force them back. But I don't know if that's gonna be enough. Next creep wave and this tower is probably gonna go down. Dire do fortify and Monib is here with his sideways to clear everything out. This is the time for the Radiant to make a fight happen. 4v5. Cheese don't get hit with this arrow. Ooh, we'll just narrowly dodge it by the Chonginator. Taking that one to the face like a champ. Yeah, just walking right into that. Not the best plan. This tower will be defended overall. So I, I guess the arrow was just enough to ward them away. And now Weaver does have enough gold to buy up his butterfly. He actually has it sitting at base. Cheech is going to make a beeline for Taku. He has a blink dagger, so he has gone full bulldog. So he's not going to be caught very easily, at least until someone picks up a sheep or something. You don't really want to burn a Ravage or anything. Blink Burrow Strike, probably the most realistic thing to get him caught, to catch out the Nature Prophet. But still, actually tracking him down is a little bit difficult. If Weaver somehow gets on top of him, then, well, yeah, that's a dead Nature Prophet. But ra right now, Agadim Scepter being picked up by Disruptor. If he could drop that on Doombringer without activating the BKB... And Doobringer is going to drop in like a rock. With all the. Whoa. Okay, Templar Assassin is apparently also capable of killing off Nature's Prophet, who. I mean, got caught off with no blink, I guess. Cheech, don't get arrowed. That's the only way you die. But even if you do get arrowed, I don't think you die, so. You're, you're fine. Get hit with an arrow all you want. Lincolns will keep you alive. Believe in the Lincoln Sphere. Believe in Drop and his level 2 Ravage covering you. Mid push once again, this time with knowledge that the Nature Prophet is down. Why not stop in the jungle? They could very easily just right click this tower down if they wanted to. See? That's about how easily they could do it. Wasn't that easy? Now they could go top lane, they could even try to go high ground. Sean was just reclaimed though, so it looks like they're probably going to. And they could probably go for top tier 2 and then go for Roshan. Seems reasonable to me. I mean, they know that as when they're grouped up, they're pretty much unbeatable. Is BKB done on OD? It is. So OD will be able to do all the damage he wants, but really, with four staff power treads, the damage that OD is putting out is nothing too spectacular. He's gone for almost a purely defensive build, which I mean, will definitely keep him alive for a little bit, but then what? Survivability is only good if you have something to contribute afterwards. Top tier 2 will be ground down really quickly due to Cheech's Radiant Desolator. And now is it going to be knocking on the high ground? It most certainly will be. Cheech leading the charge. No, they're going to blink straight to the right. Arrow does hit onto drop. Cheech is still pushing it out by himself. Doesn't really need the rest of his team. He could push faster than the Nature's Prophet at this point with the Desolator and Gemini attack. Add Monib into the mix and you have a forced fortification. All five of the Radiant will be forcing this fight up on top lane. Mech will keep everyone healthy. And, well, they really need something to happen. An arrow onto Cheech is a great way to start into an imprison, but drops there with a huge ravage onto literally everyone. Malasom is going to come in. BKB is going to protect Huga from a lot of that damage. He's standing pretty strong. Cheech does get doomed. So there's no time left just yet. This is going to be a lethal doom onto Weaver, but Weaver turning around, doing so much damage in return. Cheech is going to go down. Can he kill off anyone else? He does eventually drop. Now glimpse back onto the Doomringer. Is there enough damage with Monad here? Cheech going to buy back and time lapse back into that fight. That's going to be a four for one engagement. That is going to be the end of the melee top racks, the range top racks. And hell, they could even rotate to the mid lane and secure even more if they really do want to. Doom. Guess what's happening to Dyer's bottom tower. As a refresher orb, apparently. Did not realize that fact. But the raxes have been taken. The goal has been achieved. Now they just need everyone to get back up to full HP, and then you could rinse repeat down the bottom lane. The rat from Nature's Prophet suddenly got a lot, lot harder due to the mega or super creeps up on top. You can try to do it in mid lane, but uh, I don't really know if that's going to get him anywhere. Roshan is up once again, and Cheech is going to make a beeline straight for that. Getting a heart on this Weaver, and I think he just might be unkillable, even with the Doom. And if I was a Weaver, and if I had a Butterfly and Desolator and Lincoln Sphere 33 minutes in the game, 
I would definitely be looking for a heart. So once that happens, you can see how much damage the Doom did on Weaver. It was intense, but it did take a long time for the Weaver to actually drop. If he gets a heart, he's nigh unkillable. It will be very, very difficult for the Radiant to kill him off. And it's not even a hero that you can just ignore. You need to deal with this Weaver, or else he will punish you in a big way. Arrow will fly. It's a little bit too late, however. And now Cheech is on the hunt. Black and yellow. Uh-oh. One shot. Germinate. Shikuchi. Two shots. Oh, well, he's going to buy himself a little bit of time. But, <laughs> yeah. The time bought was simply not enough, guys. Simply not enough. The objective has been pinged out. Epicenter, Ravage, everything will be available for use once this bottom lane creep wave hits the base. And then I think at that point, it's just an easy secondary set of racks. I don't want to call it just yet, but when you have an advantage like this, at this stage in the game, with a stacked weaver who's not unkillable because of no stuns, then you're looking really good for yourself. The team fight advantage, the item advantage, the team comp advantage at this point. And just so overwhelmingly in favor of hot hands, and they're just going to straight make a straight push. Cheech is going to get hit with at least one of the dooms, but he has an Aegis this time. He does not care. So he's going to go straight up to the high ground, start knocking at that tower, and Templar Assassin will have Mantis style illusions as well. Look at this tower drop. So much damage. Cheech will get level death eaten by Lincoln Sphere. Back off for another 15 seconds, because why risk it? But the tower dropped to half HP with zero commitment from Hot Hands. Just got to wait for Ravage to find an opening. Maybe Sand King on the bottom end with an Epicenter. Although, having that Mjolnir on, uh, or Maelstrom on H Prophet make things a little bit difficult for the blinkers of the Hot Hands side. But they're not in a rush at all. And mid lane may be pushing towards them, although it's not. Mid lane's pushing towards the Radiant. Top lane's also pushing towards the Radiant. Cheech has an Aegis to use, and he wants in. He's going to get Dune, but does he care? BKB up onto Huga as he goes straight to the front line. Cheech will get mech'd up. That's going to be the first Doom down. Huga's saving the second one for him, but the Epicenter going to kill the rest of his team. OD coming from the behind, though. Going to kill off the, the Disruptor immediately. Drop does escape out of there, and another Imprison onto Weaver. We'll save him actually a lot of HP. You know what it is. Got to try to get out of there. Mana right on his behind. Now Cheech is going to be... Brought back, and well, he's still taking a lot of damage from Huga. He's gonna get chopped down. Huga's actually just going to town on everyone. He's gonna get a kill onto drop. OD is still in the air. It's an ultra kill for Huga. There's an imprisoned TA here on top of that. This might be a rampage. Level death. Level death. Oh, it's not just not enough. Huga with no damage items, really. Just Shiva's guard and a lot of staying power. Showing hot hands what for. And hot hands, I mean, they got a pretty good ultimate combination off. But they could not lock down this Doombringer enough. Unfortunately for them, Doombringer's BKB is down to 4 seconds. And if Weaver does manage to pick up his heart, which he did pick up the Reaver before, I think he ha did not have this have the Reaver in the fight. Then that will be... Well, it will be a lot more difficult for the Doom to bring down the Weaver, first of all. Doom, keep in mind, does cancel out evasion. Or, uh, butterfly evasion. Actually, it cancels out all evasion. Backtrack is an exception because you get uh, it's triggered, but I think that's about it. That's the only exception, I believe. Yeah, if Weaver gets this hard up, then those fights probably won't happen again. They didn't get the tower. It looks like they might get something else because it's a trap. It's a trap. Oh my God, the damage! There's a butterfly on top on Moniv. He was just chilling in the meld. Oh god, it was a tarp the entire time. That's brutal. That is absolutely brutal. Now haste rune being found. They go for the same thing on middle lane, on bottom lane. I think it'll be wise though to let Cheech farm just a little bit more for his heart. Because this weaver is really the linchpin of the plan. As long as you're popping ultimates onto a BKB of doom. I mean, the rest of his team is going to dry up pretty quickly, but... At the end of the day, if Doom's there, if OD's there, who still has a little bit more duration on his BKB, it's... that's not BKB, it's still 9 seconds. You really need the Weaver to follow up. And Weaver is going to pick up his, B, his uh, heart as his courier, flying out with the recipe. Most likely, yes. So the heart will be picked up. That will, of course, mean that there's no cute buyback shenanigans for the Weaver. I think a heart might be worth it. 
Nah, I think I'd rather have buyback. Well, I mean, if you're going to buyback and time last back into the fight, you're going to be pretty low since you'd be taking all that damage over time from Doom. So coming into the fight with like 500, 700 HP, not exactly what you want to be doing. So I think Heart might just be a better idea, and he will get that by the time this push reaches the base. So all the team fight ultimates will be up once again. This time there is a Veil of Discord on Melisom and a Heart on Weaver. No real item progression has been made except for another plate mail on the Doombringer and on the OD. Looks like Shiva's for the o OD. Going to give himself a little bit more damage. Cut through that Weaver. And here we go. Illusions being made. TA to the front lines. Go, go, TA Illusions. Zero. Danger. So easy. Tower is easily going to be picked up. Well, actually Shadow Demon going to steal a couple of them, but the tower... Oh, it's going to be close. Evasion Butterfly. TA gets the destruction. I would deny. That was really close. But the tower is now down, so... It's going to be a little bit easier to breach the high ground. Don't have to worry about shooting from the low ground anymore. It's all well and good. Observer gets placed. That is a Radiant Observer. Not in range of that dire sentry. But Mondim now with the butterfly. He's almost reaching Weaver levels of threat. He's a little bit easier to take down, to be fair. But that butterfly and man style, he's attacking pretty damn quick. And Cheech, you're just gonna, you know, throw out a couple hits, get that Desolator minus armor so that the TA illusions can do a little bit more work. Major Prophet has his hands full up on top lane, so this push, I mean, they have all day to do this. Those evasion numbers really working well, even for the illusions. And patience. Just patience. There is they're in no rush. Hot hands are waiting for their opportunity to strike. And by strike, I mean, you know, Shikuchi up to the high ground. Poke the tower once, get that geminate with the desolator. Kill the range racks. Easy. Easy game. Sentries, observers, there we go, moving in for the Ravage, can they bring down Huga? Already you know what it is, off on the sidelines, gonna pop the OD ultimate, drop dropping really low, Mesom gonna gump, come in with the epicenter, but it actually didn't do anything, Cheech though, sending strong, he's gonna do a lot of damage to the OD, Doombringer is already down, he does not have a buyback. With Sand King trade for the Doombringer, that's gonna mean the ranged racks is gonna go down, Cheech gonna instantly shift up to the top lane, has a heart so he doesn't give a damn about that tower. That's a melee racks on the bottom end. And that should be a Weaver just tanking up this tower. Taku's going to jump forward, pop off the Lincoln Sphere. You know what it is. Going to put TA in a bubble. But Cheech is just unstoppable at the moment. Silence? I don't even think he cares about Silence. He has evasion. He has a heart. He has backup in his team. Now three-man kinetic field. The melee racks is going to take it out. And that, guys, is going to be GG. There is zero possibility for the Radiant team to survive Megas, especially when Cheech is still running amok. Another 2,600 gold on him. There is literally no way that they could hand handle this, and who knows it. He's going to call GG, and Hot Hands are moving on to the Grand Finals to face up against the Earn Real Tango's team. It's getting really late, guys, but... We will, we will continue on because it's worth it. Because it's worth it. Thanks for watching, guys. GG. Yeah.